my message to most of the regulators and to the politicians is keep it simple and you're allowed to say yes. Folks, Flo here with Blockchain North. We're here at the Digital Asset Business Council's inaugural crypto policy forum. I'm here with Fred Pai, founder and chairman, I believe, you might correct me, of 3IQ. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself actually very briefly and maybe give us a little update on 3IQ. Yeah, thanks Flo. Uh, yeah, I was founder, chairman, CEO uh, of the company. Um, uh, we founded in 2012, so we're really early to the game. Our claim to fame was obviously challenging the uh, regulatory authorities to list the very first regulated Bitcoin fund in the world, which uh, was a challenge in 2019, which we won on Halloween night and uh, uh, launched in March of 2020, which was D-Day of COVID. But uh, the rest is history. In nine months, we peaked at over four and a half billion dollars of digital assets under management. And it's... Uh, we, we survived through crypto winter and now we're on for the next uh, the next run. And I'll ask you about the recent acquisition in a moment, but I kind of want to rewind a little bit. And if you'll allow me to say that you've been around the block in blockchain, uh -huh. um, how would you describe the current state of the Canadian blockchain space using just maybe a few adjectives? What, what words would you use? Where yeah. is it at? So I think uh, the Canadian um, industry itself has to re remain progressive. So. They have to keep moving forward. And my message to most of the regulators and to the politicians is keep it simple and you're allowed to say yes. Uh, just because somebody makes a request, you don't start off with a no answer. We'd like to see Canadians be very Canadian about the whole thing and say, yeah, we can work through this. We, we can make it happen because it's, it's happening around the world anyways. Yeah. Any adjectives you would use in particular to describe the industry today? Well, I, again, I think it's a very progressive industry okay. and I think it is progressive. It is progressive. We'll talk later on today about some of the regulations and changes to 81102, which are all really good movement forward. And I, you know, I'm very positive about where we're going from here. So you mentioned 2012 as sort of, uh, you know, the start at least of 3IQ. So you've been around the block for 12 years, literally. Mm -hmm. um, how do you gauge the level of receptiveness of the current federal government to this industry? Uh, I think the, the, the Canadian federal government has really been silent on this. And I think that's probably a good position because, you know, when we talk about the political scenario, I think, you know, if the current government uh, backs it, uh, they'll attract a whole new generation of voters. If the current government rejects it, they're going to lose all those current, you know, voters. Yeah, so, binary. yeah, you take a look at what's going on in the generation under 35. They're not going to their parents' banks and opening up investment accounts or bank accounts. They're all investing in high-end technologies and in blockchain and crypto, as well as, as in technology-related equity investments. Yeah. So um, one question I wanted to ask, which is a little bit gloomy, but I get a sense sometimes interviewing leaders in the industry that Canada has lost its leadership in blockchain, that it really was a leader 10, maybe even five years ago, but that the ship has sailed. Do you... Do you feel that too? Is that is there merit to that thesis, let's say? Yeah, I, I do think so. For example, when we got the first Bitcoin close end fund and then the first Bitcoin ETFs in this country, we were way ahead and, and we were going around the world and everybody's going, Canada's very progressive, it's doing this. Yeah. The noise that came out of the United States when they approved their ETFs, even though it took them 10 years, I think they got a part of that, that job wrong. Um, but... Uh, They've caught up now. Yeah, they caught up, but you know, it's 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 Japan, it's Hong Kong, it's Singapore, it's uh, London, it's the Middle East and uh, the Far East yeah. that uh, that we have to get be careful to, and we have to attract these businesses here, I, and that's why there's a lot of focus on mining here today, and I think mining has to be expanded into Canada. We have the resources. We should encourage it, not the discourage climate, it. The resources, yeah, everything. Yeah. Um, so uh, you mentioned Japan. So uh, 3IQ was just, uh, I think I understand, majority acquired, 51% yeah. uh, by Monex of Japan. Is 3IQ still Canadian? Uh, 3IQ is now 51% controlled by, uh, as of next week, by a okay. Japanese firm. So it's okay. no longer uh, what we say, Canadian controlled private company. Will it still it, be active in Canada? They'll definitely be active in Canada. Okay. Um, I'm stepping day? away. I'm kind of, will be retiring over 
the next, uh, the you've next, done, you've the next brought it to this time. place. Yeah. What activities will the company have in Canada? It'll continue to be a leading asset manager in this space and also working on very unique and creative products. But the next step in Canada is to go get pension funds and institutions uh, adopting digital assets as a legitimate um, investment vehicle because they haven't yet. Right. And for Canada to continue to survive, you need very strong asset management business to invest in this country mm -hmm. and invest in our infrastructure. Uh, so we'd like to see investments from Canadian institutions come to Canada and stay here. It's a bit of a debate right now, right, around the pension yeah. funds as well. Uh, finally, uh, 3IQ is a sponsor of this digital ABC inaugural crypto policy forum. Um, is it, how important is it to meet in person in an era and in an industry that is inherently digital? And uh, we already had the Canadian Blockchain Consortium, we have the Canadian Web3 Council. What's the difference here uh, in, in, in what it will do? Yeah, this has much more influence on, um, on uh, so we say, the legal and the taxable and government relations implication. And you have to meet these people one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, you know, we just talked about the, the tax treatment of, of, of our ETFs, uh, digital ETFs in Canada. Uh, is, is important compared to that in the United States. And as I say, we just have to keep it simple and keep the business here. Right. And I know you're a sailor. Uh, you have some experience with the Canada GP team. So if we were to maybe run some kind of a metaphor around the industry and which way it's cruising, what, what do you see on the horizon uh, as the skipper, let's say? Well, what we do at uh, Sail GP and, and my involvement in sailing is with a program we can inspire. We inspire youth to get out and get off their computer, get onto a sailboat and go foiling and have some fun. And I think it's the same message that we like to give. Uh, Canada should give our, our youth and our entrepreneurs uh, that we can inspire lecture. Like say, we're here as governments to help keep entrepreneurs here at home and inspire the next generation. Music to our ears. Our mission at Blockchain North is to inform, educate and inspire. So Absolutely. thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. It was a pleasure. Cheers.